In this screencast, we will learn about ES 2015, which is the new version of JavaScript. ES 2015 is just a superset on top of the previous version of JavaScript, which is ES 5. This means that everything you know is still part of ES 2015. We will see together some of the new features available. Let's get started by going to babeljs.io. They have a page on all the new features that are available in ES 2015. And there's an interactive page that allows you to write the new version of JavaScript on the left and see the output on the right. Since ES 2015 is just a superset of ES5, it means we can write regular JavaScript on the left and see the exact same output on the right. You can also see the output of your code on the bottom right. Let's get started by learning about template strings. We have a function say hello with one parameter name and it returns a very long message. The annoying thing is that we have to concatenate the variable with the string and then the variable again with the next string. And let's say you have an apostrophe s, then I have to escape it with a backslash or use double quotes. And then for multiple strings, I need to concatenate everything with a string of backslash n. This is annoying and doesn't feel natural at all. However, template strings allow us to rewrite this in a much more natural syntax, by just dropping the string with the backtick character instead of a quote, and then we could interpolate the variables by using the dollar sign and then curly braces. Notice how we don't have a problem with escaping the apostrophe anymore. And guess what? Multiline strings just work out of the box. This format is much more convenient than the previous one. Let's take a look at how Babel is transpiling this for older browsers. It's almost exactly how we used to write it, so nothing fancy here. The next feature that we're going to see is classes. You can now define your own classes. For example, I'm going to define a class user that has a constructor function, which takes two parameters, first name and last name. I can also create my own custom methods, for instance, get full name, which returns the first name and the last name. I'm using template strings here, by the way. The syntax for class is clean and neat, but you have to remember that you are still dealing with prototypes. This is just a syntactic sugar to make writing prototypes much easier. So you are still dealing with prototypical inheritance. And that's how you can use the class and our custom method. and as usual the output is on the bottom right. This is an easy one. Say you created a function called say hello that expects one parameter, name, and you want to give a default value for in case the argument was undefined. You can now easily do this instead of manually checking if name is empty or not. So if I call say hello without any argument, the value of name will be user, which is the default. Arrow functions are one of the most interesting features of ES 2015, but we'll keep it short in this screencast. Arrow functions allow you to define functions in a shorter syntax by using the fat arrow syntax. So here's how you can write this say hello function using the new syntax. Notice how we start by writing the parameters between parentheses and then we have the fat arrow and then the two braces contain our function code. In this scenario these two functions are exactly the same. 
The only benefit so far is that the arrow function is much shorter. Now whenever you have just one line of code inside this function, you could omit the return keyword and the curly braces. This is useful if you're doing functional programming. For example, in this add function, because we just have one line of code, we can omit the return and the curly braces and we will have this short syntax. This is a subsection of arrow functions. I'm going to create a class users that has a property age set to 10. And then inside this constructor, I have a set timeout function that will increment the age after 100 milliseconds and then output it to the console. What would you expect to get? 11? Wrong. This dot age is undefined, so this dot age plus plus will not work. The reason why this dot age is undefined is because this inside the new function of set timeout on line seven has a completely different value than this inside the class on line four. So there has been many ways to fix this issue. Historically, you've seen the var that equals this, which captures the value of this into a variable called that, so that we can use it inside the function. But that's just ugly, although it works. Another way of fixing this is by binding the value of this to the function. However, it turns out if you use arrow functions, the original piece of code will just work. That's because when using arrow functions, the original value of this is maintained. That's what we call lexical this. What const really does is that it allows you to forbid reassignment to any of your variables. If you declare a variable as const, you cannot reassign it. Reassigning it will result in a compile time error. For example, max age is read only. However, this does not mean that the value of the variable is actually a constant. Because if you define an array as a const, you can still push elements to it or pop elements from it. Let allows you to define variables. In this example, it seems exactly the same as var, but let me show you why it's much better. Suppose I have a for loop where I count from 0 to 9. If I console log outside this loop the value of count, we get 10, which might lead to errors as this behavior is unexpected. However, if I use let instead of var, you can see that count is now undefined outside the for loop. We say that let is blocks code. The variable it creates is available only inside the block rather than inside the function if you compare it to var. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to see my latest videos.